name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, Padre Pio was once asked, Father, what's stopping me from being united forever with God? His response was, worry. He added, pray, hope, and don't worry. We live in a worrisome world. Worry acts like a cancer in our mind and can lead to extreme thoughts and give rise to dozens of problems. It can affect our emotions, our bodies, and even tarnish our souls because it shows we do not trust God. We live in a troubled world and may think that our crosses in life have occurred totally on their own without any purpose. And in fact, this is knowing that God is almighty, all-loving, and all-merciful. He's always in control of history, things past, present, and future. He doesn't wait to see what happens and then make his decision. Since we're God's children, this should lead us to have a tremendous faith and trust in his divine providence and his infinite love for us. We should realize that we're not at the mercy of our surroundings. Our Heavenly Father is watching over us and protecting us regardless of how things appear exteriorly. My dearly beloved in Christ, a beautiful example of faith and trust in God is found in the book of Job. In the manifold and severe sufferings which God allowed to be inflicted upon him by the devil, Job did not sin, nor did he charge God with any moral wrongdoing. It's written in Holy Scripture that Job said, The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. As it has pleased the Lord, so be it done. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all these things, Job sinned not by his lips, nor spoke he any foolish thing against God. Job realized that all things belong to God and are given to us as a gift, even crosses and situations that we cannot understand. The Lord is sovereign over all. The lessons we're giving, given in Job is that he did not despair over his loss and that he had tremendous faith in God, even though he didn't understand why he was suffering. He saw the hand of God in the events that occurred and therefore did not curse the devil, desert raiders who took his wealth and killed his servants. Nor did he blame the other tribe which took all his camels and killed his servants. Even when all his children were, were killed, when the roof caved in because of violent winds, and when his own body was diseased, Job did not murmur against God. Job still trusted God without knowing any of the whys. He was eventually cured and rewarded tenfold of what he had before. What a lesson for us. What we need to realize is that confidence in God must be our mainstay, no matter what. My dearly beloved in Christ, we do not have spiritual eyes to see things from God's perspective. Therefore, we cannot totally trust ourselves, and surely not the world in which we live. We cannot fly from God nor hide from Him. Confidence in God is an absolute necessity in our spiritual life because it increases our faith and gives us courage, patience, and perseverance. Throughout Holy Scripture, God, God stresses his fidelity to us and perpetually calls attention to it. By the virtue of hope, we trust that God will give us eternal life and the means to attain it because of his infinite power, mercy, and fidelity. Even on a natural level, confidence in another is trust and surrender of self to him. Our confidence in God produces interior dispositions in us whereby we sense our responsibility to love and obey him. It also produces in us a childlike simplicity and calmness of spirit like that of a child resting in his mother's arms. We are weak and feeble. Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. It's very important that we pray with childlike confidence, that we humble ourselves, trust in God's almighty power, and realize that we're indeed nothing without his strength and grace. If our unworthiness frightens us in prayer, we can confidently 
rely on God's infinite compassion and love. Our confidence in God is based on the assurance of his love and his desire for our salvation. My dear and beloved in Christ, we can make in comparison with those with whom we may or may not trust here on earth. The more virtuous the person, the more we feel confident by placing our trust in her. And there was a story of a boy who was uh, at a lake, and he came up to a lady and said, Do you believe in God? And she said, Yes. Do you say your prayers every day? Yes. Do you read the Bible? Yes. Okay, can you hold my wallet? I'm going to go swimming for a while. <laughs> if we know a person to be wise, virtuous, and prudent, we know, thereby know that he or she can be trusted. We all need a trusted friend. Our relationship to God goes even deeper. We should ask ourselves, what has God done that we as creatures do not trust him? We need only look upon our life up to this very moment to realize how much God has done for us. Just as he delivered the chosen people from the slavery of the Pharaoh, fed them with manna from heaven, and finally led them to the promised land, God has freed us from the slavery of the devil when Christ redeemed us gave us the wonderful grace of baptism in the Catholic faith and made us his own children. Despite the many hardships of life, he shielded us from many difficulties. It does not let the devil tempt us beyond our strength. He is faithful by not abandoning us in our trials, whereby the greater the temptation and trial the more loving and effective is his help and grace. God never fails us, though we often fail him. He feeds us, he feeds our souls with his most sacred body and blood and holy communion in order to fortify our soul by his light, strength, consolation, pardon, help, love, and grace. He continues to strengthen our souls against the ceaseless attack salts of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and then forgives our sins in the sacrament of penance. God floods our soul with all the graces necessary for salvation. Finally, he is faithful in giving us our eternal reward if, with the help of his grace, we follow him faithfully and die in the state of grace. Thus, in the fidelity of God lies our hope. Hence, the closer we are, we are united to him, the more we experience his infinite love and care for us. As a result, the more we feel confident to surrender and place under his will and his care our entire self and all that he's given to us. Meditation on the life of Christ, especially during the recitation of the rosary and reading the Gospels, will vastly increase your trust in God. When afflicted by outward temptations and inward trials. Our confidence in God will give us the strength, endurance, and perseverance to successfully get through them. Our trust in God must endure through all the events of life, all the circumstances surrounding us and everything that happens to us. It must be incessant, universal, and bold. Regarding this type of trust, Father Faber writes, a child with his mother is full of innocent, respectful liberties. He never doubts of gaining his end. He never anticipates a refusal till it actually comes, no matter how often it's come before. He was refused yesterday, so he sure feels sure today. If refused, he persists with the persuasions of obedient love and argues with a playful smile. When he is definitely refused, he goes up to his mother, kisses her, and runs away as happy with his mother's affectionate will as if he had got what he had wanted. So must we venture to be with our eternal father. 
A perfect, an example of perfect trust in God can be seen in the Blessed Virgin Mary's total submission to his will. By her fiat at the Annunciation, Mary offered herself in the most humble way to be God's handmaid. In her profound humility, she admitted that all belongs to God. Her body with its senses, her soul with all its powers, all she thought, said, and did was for the love of God and according to his will. In effect, this meant that she trusted that God would provide and direct all things according to his loving providence. She depended upon him for everything, knowing and trusting that he would give her his grace and help her to do all that was asked of her. Let us ask our Heavenly Mother for the grace to imitate to the best of our ability the confidence and love of her total submission to the will of God. Let us also pray for the grace to eliminate extreme thoughts which disturb our peace of mind and soul. Let us fear no evil because the Lord is with us. St. Francis de Sales said that we should continually strive to conform ourselves to God's will. For it is this will, he says, which with infinite wisdom rightly distributes, distributes prosperity and adversity, health and sickness, riches and poverty, honor and contempt, knowledge and ignorance, and all that happens in this life. He further counsels by saying, do not look forward to the changes and chances of this life in fear. Rather look to them with full hope that as they arise, God, whose child you are, will deliver you out of them. He is your keeper. He has kept you in the past. Do not do you but hold fast to his dear hand, and he will lead you safely through all things. And when you cannot stand, he will bear you up in his arms. Do not look forward to what may happen tomorrow. Our Father will either shield you from suffering, or he will give you the strength to bear it. I'll close with Our Lady of Guadalupe's words to Juan Diego, which are so consoling and encouraging. Hear and let it penetrate into your heart, my dear little son. Let nothing discourage you. Nothing depress you. Let nothing alter your heart or your countenance. Do not fear any illness or vexation, anxiety or pain. Am I not here who am your mother? Are, not, are you not under my shadow and protection? Am I not your fountain of life? Are you not in the crossing of my arms, in the folding of my mantle? Is there anything else that you need? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.